Welcome to the fifth episode of this uh, segment of mine, uh, Empower of Your Life. Uh, the next guest that uh, we will be able to speak with, uh, she is the person behind the Pitality. I met her through Grace Eun, the uh, co-founder of Lemique. If you haven't read the article or the blog that I have uh, published um, maybe months ago, so please do so and I hope you find it valuable. So without further ado, let's all uh, welcome Rosemary behind the uh, the uh, Pitality. So how are you, Rosemary? Or yeah, are you? I'm feeling great today. Yes. That's great. That's great. How's Singapore overall? Singapore is great. Uh, we are very blessed that um, everything is really in control right now. Uh, people are generally accepting new norms, being masked up when we go out, uh, checking in to all the different places by scanning the UR code or our NRIC. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, other than that, life is very much as per normal already. People are shopping, people are going out, mm-hmm. people are eating out. The malls are pretty crowded, especially during last Christmas. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we had a fair in Takashimaya. I couldn't believe my eyes. It's so crowded. People actually had to queue up in order yes. to go into the mall. Yeah, because it's just so much people and officers who are trying to manage the crowd so that there's not too much people going into the mall. Yeah, but other than that, I think everything is really safe, well, well managed, very much in control. And I hope it's going to go that way for a long time. <laughs> I hope so too. Share to us uh, how everything started. Well, I had always been working in a very highly entrepreneurial environment. Uh, I grew up with uh, with this environment. So I worked in this place for 10 over years. Mm-hmm. I was personally mentored by the founder who is a very powerful mentor and businessman. So I really had learned the ropes the skills, the human touch, a, a lot of business experiences from him. Yeah. Uh, and because it's such a high entrepreneurial uh, environment, I really rub off that spirit. And and I thought that, yes, uh, it was time for me to start doing it. And I was 36. Yeah, 26. You know, that was like two years or three years ago. When my child turns one, I've decided that if I don't do it now, then when? That's true. Oh my God. Yes. You did yeah. a great job making that decision. Yeah, I don't want to get too old to make this kind of decision. Well, because I was thinking if all things fail, at least I can still go back to a to, to a normal job. And okay. I'm still not too old for it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So so it was really a trigger. Well, most people say that um, family kids would tie you down. Uh, on the contrary, that was actually a push factor for me to make this decision. Yeah, you have and, more yes. more valuable purpose, I say, yes. to push yourself, right? Yes, yeah. It, it was it was really a push factor, and I think I wanted to leave a legacy yes. for my son to let him know that we should fulfill our dreams. We should dare to dream, dare to chase after what we want, even though it's stepping out of your comfort zone. Yeah, uh, you. We all need to have that courage. Yeah. Yes. Because of these motivate motivating reasons, the brand is really uh, all about aspiration, motivation, taking the courage to step out of uh, what you don't dare to usually do. Yes. Yeah. So I want to be that role model, uh, and hopefully one day I, I will be able to influence people via this brand. Yeah. Yes. So, so that was really something that uh, I hope to do. Yeah, that's great. That's great. I well, in my previous job, the one that I just mentioned, well, I was exposed a lot to um, gourmet food, tea and coffee, gifting business. So mm. I think it was very natural for me to gear towards this because it feels like it's like it's the next easiest thing I can start mm-hmm. uh, in the quickest possible time. I like tea. Even though I feel that tea might be sunrise industry, sorry, sunset industry. Yeah, it's it's almost like a sunset industry because it's so overcrowded and it's very competitive in in this industry. I still choose tea, just that uh, blooming tea is very unique, it's different. 
And to specialize in only blooming tea is not something that most tea merchants or brands will want to do because it's quite a daring move to be yes. specialized in doing only one kind of tea. Yes, yes. But we really want to be seen as the specialist. So we know how to make them. Uh, we can customize them. We can change the flavors. We can change the different flowers. Yeah. So we go into really specializing in, in that kind of tea, not just selling it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, which position ourselves as the first blooming tea specialist in Singapore. Yes. I think one the strategy that I have adopted uh, ever since the circuit breaker in Singapore was that uh, I started to pick up uh, social media skills. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I started to uh, enforce myself to post three times a week. Wow. Which was very challenging for someone who has um, zero social media knowledge and interest. Well, I actually had my first Instagram account for the business, not yes. for myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Instagram account was actually uh, initiated and uh, opened up by my sister. That's nice. She was telling me, you need to have an Instagram account. So I said, okay, uh, can you do it for me? <laughs> That's nice. She's very yeah. supportive. Good job. Yes. Uh, and that was, uh, that was imagine that was um, two to three years ago. Yeah. Uh, and I had never been active in doing it because it's just not me. Yeah. Yeah, and I probably don't really know the trick or how it should really work, right? Yeah. So uh, during the circuit breaker, we had nothing much that we can really do physically. We, we, we run no shows, um, even the stores, uh, the stockies are not uh, opened. There's no reason for us to get out and we shouldn't be going out anyway. Yeah. Uh, so I thought, okay, uh, I think it's time to brush up the skills that I had never been good at. So I really study, do research, find out what are the format that I should really be uh, using while I do my posting. So there you go. So that was really a breaking point uh, where I really start to understand how social media works. <laughs> so I start posting. Uh, uh, I, I do a lot of hands-on in photography, in content writing, uh, writing captions, understanding what hashtags are all about. All, all of those content, um, sorry to cut you, and all of yes. those content in your Instagram uh, done by you. Yes. Oh my God. I, 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 I must tell you, while I'm looking at your uh, Instagram uh, content, especially the photos, it's all about photos. Uh -huh. uh, it's very catching the attention because the quality of the photo is really nice and you know how to take the angle. <laughs> and I really love it because, you know, someone like me who love photography as well, you just kind of know that uh, they have the skill yeah. because, you know, and um, so it seems like you have a very good skill with photography. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I must admit the latest maybe nine pictures are not taken by me so mm -hmm. i actually had an intern she took uh lots of pictures to last for the next six months yeah so uh, her pictures were posted like um maybe one and a half months ago so i guided her uh in marketing point of view and uh in the business point of view um, so she was actually basically executing the photographs and then I had another intern who came after the first intern to write the captions. Wow, nice, nice. Very creative people. So yes. good job to them. Yeah, <laughs> but also... Yeah, I think they did a good job actually. But yes. you have the ideas. You are uh, delegating them to, yes. to execute it. So it's, yes. it's a teamwork. Very good. Yes. So social media. Yep. So now you're so, so you are getting to use with the social media how it works. What else that you can share to us? So that was actually a breaking point in my opinion because um, uh, I'm not too sure if it's because of social media, but somehow I feel that that is a very uh, it is a very strong factor that affected the revenue because that's during the circuit breaker time that was when my online sales uh, actually started to pick up which mm -hmm. had never really happened before because I was more into a physical strategy physical, running yes. pop stores. Yeah, so I think engaging the community, 
getting more people to know you in a more organic manner. Uh, and then finally, I dabbled myself with some sponsored posts with the grant of the government. So yeah, I think I think that was a very useful and effective step uh, that I have taken. Uh, once again, it's really stepping out of my comfort zone to learn new skills and to brush up my my photography and my writing skills. Yeah, so I think that was one major thing that COVID-19 has done good mm-hmm. for me. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I think uh, it's a lot, I think, uh, for everyone else because now, I mean, not now, but previously, uh, you can't do anything outside. So everything would be starting with digital. And yeah. since for some people that ha- uh, have already the creativity in them, you just have to execute it. So that you don't have to use uh, or hire some people. But for, of course, for someone like you, that you can, since you have a lot of things to do at the same time, and yeah. you can hire someone, then it's a very valuable to have interns. That's good. Well, I think this is really, really the major step uh, and the major change I had done to be more savvy digitally, Mm -hmm. uh, not just on social media, but um, also on doing consistent revamp on the website to make it relevant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, So it's really a lot of digital skills that I have picked up. Yeah. Talking about, since you have this very, very wide experience in entrepreneur because you're most exposed and with the business that you have as well, what tips right now that you can share to other small businesses out there, uh, whether they're struggling or whether they're just okay, that you think would be valuable for them to keep their business also going? I think it really depends on stage where the business is at. Okay, being a startup business, most brand owners work alone. Yes. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So there's a lot of things to do. Yeah, there's a lot of multitasking. There's a lot of uh, firefighting. <laughs> <laughs> I think the the key spirit here is that uh, we need to be super positive. We will always have a spirit that says, we can always do it. Nothing okay. is possible. But of course, in a practical manner, you will know what is possible, what is impossible. But in our world, is never say die and nothing is impossible. Okay. Unless we know practically or technically it's not going to be possibly done, then we know, okay, that's not real. We will, we will need to make a decision when to say, okay, that's not real. Let's move on. <laughs> Yeah, if not, almost everything is possible in our in our world in that sense. <laughs> so you, you you sort of in your business, how you deal with it, it's more about spiritual kind of uh, belief that you yes. always uh, apply that I can do it, we can yes. do it. Yes, um, let's find your not- solution. Let's find your way. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> other things else will, will work in, on, on its own when yes. we, our mindset, believe that things can happen. Yes, so right. it's all the mindset, is that right? I think the mindset is super, super important uh, because if you really have the right mindset and if the thing still doesn't work for you, then you know that you have done not just your best, but you have done the best. That's right. Yeah, That's right. So I, I think this internal strength is really something that had bring me uh, task far for uh, going into our, uh, our third year of this brand, this business. Yeah, mm-hmm. and other than that, I feel that people is the most important. Whether you are a, a one-man show or you really have a team. Um, why? Because if you have a team, then you are only as good as the weakest player. So. Personally, I believe that we should always believe in in another person, groom them, teach them so that in return, they are able to help your business. True, true. Yeah. If not, if we, if we are a single uh, operation uh, business, then it's still really about people because other than your customers, it's really about your partners. It's <laughs> really about your community. Right, mm-hmm. uh, and if we are always able to add value to the people around us, uh, in return they will also add value to us. That's true. I agree with that. So I think it boils down to 
circle of people that you interact with and uh, if they see that um, not only like if they feel like it's valuable and then they will give you something in return but also the feeling that it's sincere that it's helpful for me therefore i think it will be valuable and helpful for other people to know this brand yes. right it's true um, it's true it's really creating these positive vibes around true i agree with that So talking about on the other side of a group of people that would like to start a business in any type of industries, what are those tips that you would like to share to consider before starting a business or small business? Right. I think knowing your resources is very important. When I say resources, other than financial resources, which is definitely a must have, what is very important is really the people resource. Mm-hmm. The people resource as in when when you're really stuck in decision making or in in your business is there someone that you could really go to so well once again it's almost like a mentor i think a mentor is very important is someone that you could go to yep yep yeah. so you still communicate with your your mentor so called from your previous job or no longer <laughs> no actually we 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 still communicate not as often but i think having him as my mentor well each time if i am stuck I always ask myself, if I were my mentor, what would he do? Okay. So I will always have a benchmark. Yes. Uh, not my benchmark because I am not good enough. But if I have somebody stronger, his benchmark would be, would be always a better one. And I think um, that also keeps me going because it's. But once again, is is like there is a force to tell you or to guide you. That should be the right way to do and do the right thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's it's really it's really funny. Nothing about business. I suddenly thought of this. I was also pretty close to my mentor's wife, who is okay. a very strong woman. When I was in the hospital, about to give birth to to my son, and I was actually pretty scared because it was an emergency uh, cesarean. Wow. Yeah. Uh, the doctor just say, uh, "Okay, let's not waste time. Let's go into the operation room and just do oh a C-section." So, and he looked uh, urgent about it, you know. Yeah. So that made me feel uh, a little scared as well. And it was my first time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so when I look look uh, onto the <laughs> ceiling because I was lying down, so I was looking at the yeah. ceiling. I was looking at the wall. Um, my mentor's wife's image just came about. Ah. Huh. Then. Then I just think, okay, uh, everything is be everything is going to be okay. And so anyway, her name is Christine. So uh, if if Chris uh, can be a strong woman, so uh-huh. can I. Yes. So you know, it's it's really times like that when you read when you read a crunch, you really need someone or an image to show you that hey, look, if he or she can do it, you can do it too, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's nothing spiritual, but it's just a it's just a. It's just a moving force for you to look up to in that sense, yeah. So, in a sense that, for you to f- move forward or force yourself to to keep going is that to look s- to into someone who's better than you, yes, or one step better than you, and then just to imagine, okay, if I if he's in my position or she's in my position, what should I do? So that's the kind of of the strategy and moving power that you sort of use whenever you are in a very challenging uh, situation. Yes, that's nice. Yeah, that has been very useful for me actually. So, what else can you share about other things uh, apart from having uh, someone or resources and what what you said or mentioned um, before I think starting? To all entrepreneurs who want to start their own business, their family members will really have to give the support. So I would recommend that no matter how independent you are, it's always good to speak to your family members, share with them your thoughts and what you intend to do, and ask for their support. Ask for their support. Prepare their mind. Maybe、uh, about to happen. Let them know that. For example, in this case, I have a kid, so I would tell my husband something like, "Hey, you know, during the weekends when、uh, I'm busy,、uh, 
uh, when I'm involved in my pop-up stores, uh, I won't be able to spend time with the kid. So um, this will be the time that I will require your support, manage the child and to be there for him. Are you able to do that? Yeah, so I think an understanding partner or an understanding family member uh, will know what you need the most. And so long as you preempt them in advance, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be very useful. So this what is if, to, yeah, sorry, go on. Yeah, so, so this is to uh, reduce the uh, tension when it really happens. So you preempt mm -hmm. them in advance. So this is, this is the part where you have sort of issue because they can be supportive for for those people the family or the partner that uh -huh. maybe might not be as supportive as you can expect or as you can think of yeah what advice can you give them oh i think mm -hmm. that it really depends on how much you want your dreams to come true yeah yeah, I think when we when we seek understanding from our partners and family members, we are not asking for permission. Yeah, we are seeking understanding. Uh, yes. And at least if they are not understanding or they are not willing to do so, then uh, you will have to gauge how how hungry are you for your aspiration to happen. If you are okay. very hungry, uh, and you can't get the positive That's vibes good. and understanding from your own uh, closest group of people then you probably have to find new groups of people to give you the kind of support. True, true. Agree. I think that's how the community works, right? Mm -hmm. Finding your community that like-minded, yep. that uh, <laughs> going for a bold decision to pursue yes. your your dreams, as what you said. Yes. Yeah, nice. that's true. <laughs> true. So I'm sure that uh, on that time, since you have already asked the support from your husband, that there will be time that you will be more on your business, right? Um, but how did you explain these things to your son that during this pandemic, you will be more at home? So of course, I think he would love it. Yes. How did you explain the situation for him at his age to understand? Right, so um, I read some parenting tips and I learned that um, we don't tell our kids that we need to go out to work to make money. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, we, we, because they will feel that, hey, so so we do we leave for money? Because you need to leave me alone. I mean, during the circuit breaker time, you have a lot more time at home. You spend yeah. um, more time with me. So why is it you need to go out? Why do you need to go and go and work, okay. right? Yeah. So I don't tell him that I need to work for money. I tell him that I need to work because that's my life. Uh, you are going to have your own life uh, when you are ready. When you are ready, you're going to go to school. That is your life. So there will be a time that you will be away from mommy, or there will be a time that mommy will be away from you. But by the end of the day, we are still coming back together. So like. this is this is how I explain to him, uh, because I want him to know that you have to work for your life to improve your life. Uh, yes, um, you know the reward is money, but uh, it, that's maybe the way you you measure in the yeah interpretation. It depends with the individual. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but by the end of the day, you want to work for your life because uh, that is what uh, makes you a person, makes you a human. And that is what makes your life more interesting because that could be your aspiration. It could be something yeah. that you really enjoy to do. Yeah, so this is, this is actually how I explain to a young kid. <laughs> actually, the way how you say it, I mean, the way you explain it, you're already building your son to be strong. Because you're already telling him the fact that you're doing it for yourself. It means that whatever you have decided moving forward, once you're already a grown-up man, you will be on the same page. But it's up to you which path or journey you are going to take. I like that. You have already exposed, or not exposed, but like uh, giving your, your son a mindset that you do it because not for money, but because this is you. Yes, nice. One of the questions I really love, and this is, I think, a very good question to ask you as well, because you're a mom. 
you are managing a lot of things at the same time apart from the business. So my question would be, how do you keep yourself optimistic being a mom, being a partner, and also as a boss with your business? I think I, I don't really have much time to have negative thoughts. <laughs> I, I feel that when you are productive, Uh, or when you are trying to be productive, um, you don't really have time to entertain negative thoughts or anything that doesn't make you move forward. You can only think of thoughts that can bring you to the next stage of your life. Yeah, so how, how is it that I keep myself positive? Uh, it had never really come across my mind because um, the only way you can go is to be progressive and to go forward. Nice. Yeah, you can't really spend too much time thinking about negative thoughts and trying to bury yourself in emotions you probably can't do that and you don't have time to do it you just have to move forward well no doubt is that we are humans uh there will be, there will always be time that we feel irritated we feel discouraged we feel angry <laughs> These things happen, right? Yeah. My first instinct is, what is a solution? Okay. So yes. we're the same. We always think about solution. I'm a solution-based yes. person. Yes, yes, yes. What is what is the solution? Let's talk about the solution and let's do it. Because being negative and being emotional doesn't really help the situation. Yeah. Yeah. So as a, as a mom and as a as a partner, definitely there will be differences between what your your son thinking and how they behave during this pandemic and also your partner. So how you as a strong woman manage the differences. I think it's really ultimately still coming up with a solution that uh, is a win-win situation for mm -hmm. everyone. No perfect solution. We have to accept that there will be uh, no perfect way of doing certain things, but we will try to come up with the best way for everyone. Yeah. So I think acceptance is very important. I see. Yes, yeah. that's good. We, we need to accept the situation and all parties will have to accept the situation. Yes, if you're looking at this interview and you're not from Singapore, you still can get our Blooming Teas. Just just visit our website, www.pitaltea.com. Um, you can follow us on our Instagram or Facebook. Instagram account will be Pital Tea. So basically it's Petal with an E, <laughs> yeah. and then T, yeah, so it's uh, Patel T, yeah, yeah, so yes, I think you can find us really um, easily, and we have this practice of replying uh, to all inquiries within 24 hours, nice, so yeah, you will hear from us, great, it's a very profound and valuable interview that I hope you find it also fulfilling while doing it, and um, thank you so much, you're most welcome, Thank you. Thank you for your time. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.